Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Our Stories, His Glory. As most of you probably know, it's the week of the App State University of North Carolina Tar Heel football game. And the one thing that I can tell you is it's going to be one of the biggest games in App State, Boone, North Carolina history because the Tar Heels are coming in and they're coached by Mac Brown, who was the coach at App State in 1983. So I thought it'd be great to get some of the guys that played on that team in 1983. And unfortunately, probably for them, I'm one of them, uh, but these guys actually got on the field. And I, so I thought it'd be great to bring them back and we could share some old app stories and maybe talk about the game a little bit and talk about what they're doing now. So I've got Terrell Murphy and Dino Hackett. Uh, again, I'll let them say hello and then we'll get started. Terrell Murphy, how you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing great, man. Good to see you, and thanks for just allowing me to redeem some time with you. Good, good to check check in with you, man. Yeah, and we've got stories to share too. But I also got some stories with this guy down here. He's probably you can't see his picture, but Dino Hackett's here. Here, Dino, are you still on there with us, or have you yep. given up on me yet? Okay. Right. And we're glad to have you. A lot of people have since I did the ads a few days ago have said, I'm tuning into that just to hear what these guys, they don't care what I got to say. They want to hear what, what you guys have got to say. So I'm going to share a, a picture up here and I'm, I'm going to share a few, uh, a few stats along the way too, that I think people might be interested in. Uh, so let's, I'm going to share the screen and you guys tell me when you can see it, but you're going to see some pictures here in a moment of oh, us way back when. Right? <laughs> So that is the cover of the 1983 media guide. Um, and as you can see, it's faded over the years. It's not that bright gold anymore. It's kind of a yellow. And yeah. those were the pictures on the inside of that. And they had our numbers for whatever reason. Some of the numbers were out to the side. Some were underneath like mine. And I was just so proud to have a picture in the media guide. I mean, <laughs> that's all I really cared about. So. Um, I want to go back and, and ask you a couple things about that year. Um, Tara, I'm going to start with you and just tell me a little bit about, you know, playing for Coach Brown and it being your senior year and just how much that year and that team meant to you. You know, it was a, it was a great year, uh, I think, in Appalachian State football. I think a big transition started uh, at that time. Uh, I had been coached for three years by Mike Working, who right. Coach Mac uh, preceded. Uh, and so we had not done very well at all. Uh, I think more people came up to the mountains to see the leaves change than they did to see us play. We just weren't weren't that good. But we had a lot of heart and we uh, but we didn't have the talent, didn't have the skill sets. And so when Coach Mac came in in the spring going into which would have been my senior season, uh, it was a joy to know that he carried the level of respect, the, 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 the wisdom and the insight and the knowledge of the game. And he had a different type of staff around him. And so I could see the buildings of a great program. Uh, unfortunately for, for me, uh, I think it was the second practice of uh, that each spring going into my senior year that I had my knee taken out from under me um, and then re-injured that knee again uh in about the third game of the year down at the citadel uh behind that big wall didn't know if i was going to get out from behind that wall or not but uh and then i really didn't play but six games seven games my entire uh senior year uh but again great experience but it was a joy we beat wake forest that year that was a big big for us but watching uh, new talent come forth and knowing that the future of the program was going to be great was exciting. And, and this guy, 38, was one of those guys that I knew that uh, we were going to be able to build a good future on. And it proved to be so. Yeah. So, Dino, I, uh, you were a sophomore then. You played the first year um, under Coach Working. And then Coach Brown came in. So you end up playing that. Coach Brown was only there that one year. Right. And you played. Give me your uh, memories of that season. and. Just what all, you know, your teammates or what all you remember from that state football game? Well, I agree with Terrell. That I think that was really a turning point in Appalachian State football. Again, I was recruited by working and, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of success. Uh, 
I think the culture and the discipline that you need for the game of football was a little bit lacking. That's why they didn't have the success that that Coach Brown brought to the program, and it, it was as much needed. Um, and I, I just remember the, it was just the entire culture of and 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 our goals that we set for ourselves and what we did during the off season really really changed. And you know. Along with Coach Brown, he brought a really good coaching staff, and obviously one of those was Sparky Woods. And, you know, I think you know, with those two guys, uh, you know, you, you saw obviously what they did with the program. And, and then, of course, you know, what Coach Moore has, has done since then, uh, you know, made App State the football program that it is. And, uh, you know, recognition that 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 it has now as a football school which I'm, I'm proud to say that but um i have heard that terrell got hurt his senior year um you know i i remember he had my his junior year my freshman year i uh, i started playing i think the third game of the season, i finally played a little special teams i finally got on the field as a starter um so i think we had a great expectations going into uh in 1983, and um, it, it was the start of what I really feel the change uh, in, in culture and um, what Appalachian football become today. Yeah, yeah, and so there, I looked back at some of the stats from then, and I, I think on homecoming we had 16,000 people today. Gardner Webb almost beat us. Um, yeah. And now they're going to have 34, 35,000 for this weekend. So, um, I, and I would say that it all started that year. I think that's when everything turned because Coach uh, Wood kept it going and then Coach Moore and uh, the great line of coaches since then. So, I, I want to give you just a quick uh, when, when Murph, when you said something about that Citadel game, a thought crossed my mind. I got, I was not traveling that weekend. And apparently my name got called and I was at home watching on TV because it was one of the few televised games. And they're like, where's Stroop, Strop, whatever his name is. And I think Troy Douglas had to say, uh, be a flanker the whole time because he didn't have anybody to back him up. And yeah. it was one of the few times I'd worked up to third on the depth chart. So okay. um, I do remember that. So I got, I got a statistic in a minute, but I, I want to give you each – um, well, no, let's go ahead and do this. There, I got a statistic I want to share with everybody. Okay. Collectively, us three as App State football players, we have an impressive record. Between us three ASU football players, we had 372 tackles. We had 26 <laughs> tackles for loss. We had four sacks, four interceptions. We also had 59 receptions, 800. 59 receiving yards, five touchdowns, and one botched onside kick recovery. <laughs> and I was hoping you would laugh. <laughs> that, that's that's good stuff. I'm trying to figure out where most of those 372 tackles came from. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if that was number 38 because I don't remember being on the field for a tackle. And I don't remember you either doing that. You know, I don't remember Dino, him scoring a touchdown, so those five must have been yours. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Dino, I was a I walked I walked on as a defensive back, right, and, uh, and traveled as a defensive back, and then stretched an Achilles, and that kind of bought me back down in the JV ball, uh, and then that spring, uh, coach working said, "Look, you can." come to, we're going to give you a full scholarship. You can come to uh, the offensive side of the ball and you'll start right now, or you can continue at cornerback and you'll start in uh, a couple of years. Uh, Cause we were pretty loaded at cornerback at that time. And, you know, I just wanted to be on the field and I said, let's do it. So uh, when we look at the 372 tackles, uh, Zoe and some of the guys would laugh at me because I led the team in tackle after interception. So that DB, that DB was still in me, Dino. Well, I thought I got a few extra I don't know if that's in the stats. I can add that in. So oh, boy. Dino had my senior year, which was his. I only played the one year. Dino kept going. In the fall of 85, because he graduated in 86, he had 200 tackles. Like, how do you do that? The tackles, in, like, you have to have 20 a game almost. 
I don't know how you're on the field enough to do that. It, it, you know, it was a special season and, you know, uh, the defense uh, allowed me, the game that we played there allowed me to not have to take on a lot of, of offensive line and we were covered up before, I was covered up for really good defensive line and Anthony Jones being probably one of the best that, uh, that played in front of me. Um, so I got to run around and make a lot of tackles. Um, uh, that is part of it. And, and I, from a very, very young, had you know, the desire to play on the professional level. Um, it was, yeah, really. this will kind of tie into to, uh, how my blessing and have always come from God. And, uh, uh, you know, when they go around a classroom, 10, 11 years old, and they asked, you know, be a fireman, a police officer, or a lawyer, a doctor, at, at probably 75 pounds, I said I wanted to be a professional football player. So <laughs> at, at that point in, in my career, um, you know, I had gotten a scholarship, which was one of my goals. Uh, I wouldn't have had a, the ability to have an education without that. Um, but, you know, I knew that if that senior year, if I didn't really, really shine, I, it was going to be difficult to get professional scouts to come up on the mountain and look. And I was fortunate enough to stay healthy and have a, a really great senior year and you know uh, again just another one of the 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 many many blessings that God has brought in my life uh, tied to, to all the blessings that he brought in my in my life wow that's that's, that's awesome all god's children said amen um, yeah 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 i'm thinking of memories as we go and i tried not to strip too much of this because i wanted this to happen but i remember a day at the end of practice uh some nfl scouts have been there and to be honest they were kind of looking at leroy howe i think mm -hmm. it's kind of who got most of the attention but he was hurt most of the time and coach brown said to everybody at the end of practice that that nfl scout had said to him that guy's a football player, and it was Dino Hackett. And I think the scout looked at me and said, that guy's a baseball player. What is he doing? Here? Um, <laughs> but honestly, I remember Coach saying that, that something that NFL scout saw that day said, that guy – and remember, there's over 100 guys on the field when you take all the walk-ons and everybody. And he said, that guy is a football player. So you – your little dream when you were a little kid was something you stayed very focused on and – and just for the record, we were all, and still are, but like I was, I was living vicariously through you when you were playing with the Chiefs. Um, I just would watch, would watch every game saying, I can't believe I know that guy. And I was yeah. that in your eyes. I'm going to show a picture of that in a minute. Yeah. I you, um, um, Terrell, I want to tell you something about what I remember to you. See, um, you, you'll remember this. Your role changed your senior year. We were flankers. We were Z. Alonzo was an X. They were split in. And our offense was geared for them to make the catches and for them to score. I mean, we did the short five-yard hitches. They did the, the glamour stuff. And, and I just remember you being so unselfish and accepting that role. And you were a senior and complimenting Zoe all the time. He got team MVP that year. Yeah. And you you were so that was such a I would say a witness to me about what a teammate is what a person is who's unselfish um and how you accepted me some little baseball player that coach brown had seen on a film and said come I was already at, at app and he saw me on film and said come out and y'all accepted me as if I was one of the guys immediately which shocked me so how do you remember that you having to change roles like it, it, it was really challenging uh, going into your senior year, uh, pretty much probably 75% uh, because of the injury. But Coach Mack believed in me. Coach Hickson believed in me. Coach Sparky believed in me. And uh, the guys had elected me as team captain that year. And uh, I, I think that no matter what position that someone has, it's the functionality of that that speaks the most, not the title. And I know growing up, my parents had always instilled in me to treat people as more important than myself and 
uh, always just pull for people and, and hope and want the best for them. Uh, but then all my life I'd played athletics. And so I had become a team player uh, coming out of my junior year, which was my all conference year. Yeah. Uh, and stats were pretty good that, that year. Uh, all of a sudden I go into this place of getting injured and God had connected me and Zoe as roommates. Uh, Zoe had been a walk on as well. And here we were as roommates and uh, just grateful for some level of maturity that he put inside of me that helped me to encourage Zoe and support Zoe. And I had had three good years. And I always yeah. believed that Zoe and Jerome McDaniels were far yeah. better than me. Uh, but because I think I ran punts and kicks also, that helped my name to be out a little bit more because I was on the field more. Yeah. Uh, but I thought those guys were always yeah. incredible. And uh, just to be able to support Zoe after watching his journey to go from a walk on and not really be received financially as he should have, and then come into his senior year, which I was had left at by then. But the uh, when he played in his final uh, season with me, just watching him do his thing, I remember running certain routes and uh, and then watching a post or a deep corner go to him. And I would tell the DB that was covering me, I'm like, it's all over now. I was, I would just say things about him in the middle of the play. Uh, but that's my guy still. We stay in communication with each other. But uh, somehow I learned how to die to self for the sake of other people and for the sake of the, of the team. And uh, certainly then for the sake of my roommate, who's still one of my, my best friends to, today but it was it was challenging yeah. but I just put myself in a different place and said uh I've been blessed incredibly for three years now let it all happen for him so Dino looking back on that team it looked to me like that um that Chris Patton was kind of a guy that you looked up to like that but he was a little bit older and I noticed that Joe are friends and he was always encouraging you just tell me kind of throughout and I know you became that guy to a lot of other guys during your career but tell me who are some of the main people at App who really influenced you being the player and the person you are? Well, you know, it's 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 funny when we talk about that 1983 season. Um, you know, the off-season program there, as you guys remember, there were a tremendous amount of changes that came in when when Coach Brown came in with his, his, his new staff and. Uh, you know, the, we opened up a lot of scholarships. I don't know if you guys remember that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but there were a lot of big changes that that happened at that time, and um, there was an incident with me and some uh, other players on the team, and some snowball fights, and some guys <laughs> uh, wow. out of fraternity. Yeah. And at that particular time. Uh, you know, a decision was was made, you know, that could have changed my life drastically in, in, in a different way. And, and those guys, you know, believed in me uh, enough to to give me that second chance and not throw me away when it, and it was a time when there were really a lot of changes happening. And, you know, that, that you know, coach coach Brown and coach and coach Woods, you know, a, I, I have to always go back to that moment in time and think of it in my life. What could have happened to me? What, yeah. how could my life have changed and been so differently? I mean, I met my wife the next year, my sophomore year, um, you know, but there's just so, so many people, my, you know, the, my, my roommate, Chris Patton, who was there um, as a defensive lineman with me, you know, we still have a, a great relationship today. Um, in uh, it, you know, there's just so many people that you, you were involved with at, you know, during your time at, in school that just left an imprint on your life. So, I mean, it's, it's really hard to, to say the, the, the number of guys, obviously, you know, you know Terrell was uh, part of those, that senior class that um, it was when I came in my freshman year, um, you know, you, know you, you looked up to. Um, the advanced Smith, there's some d defensive players that were uh, that were there my, my my freshman year that were part of the recruiting process that showed you around at app. So I mean, there's just a ton of people um, that you know you you could point to in your life, but you know, and that were the relationships while you were there. Um, but really, 
I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really ironic that we're playing Carolina this weekend and we've got two coaches on the other sideline over there, Coach Brown and Coach Woods, that played such a pivotal part in my life. I mean, it was it was really a, a not, you know, you guys knew me when I was when I was young, coming up the, through through there, you know, a little bit wild, a little bit crazy, um, and you know, just by the grace of God, um, I had some some people who believed in me and gave me second chances and. You know, really, that time, those four years of that, really molded me into a young man who went from very undisciplined and, and kind of, you know, not not much of a leader, more of a selfish person, to uh, a person who was very, very disciplined, um, took uh, what my dreams were very seriously, and uh, certainly made me be a much, much better leader um, during my, my time there because I saw, you know, it, it wasn't just being a good football player. You had to, you had to bring the team and, and show them what you were willing to sacrifice as, as a player, not just during the season, not just during games, but during the, the off-season programs. I mean, you guys remember those things. I mean, it's Folks who don't know what that was like, don't, don't know what that's all about. I mean, that's the grind that, you know, that, that is off-season training programs, the winter workouts, the mat drills, all that stuff. That's that's what, you know, shows up in, in wins and losses and, and success on the football field during the season. But there's just a small group of guys um, that, that really know what all we went through um, to get there. And – it certainly molded me as a person. Um, football to me has been just, you know, it's, it's, it's been a huge, huge blessing. Um, and, and something that, uh, you know, had my life not had that in it would have certainly, certainly turned out differently. Wow. I'm sorry, guys. I'm having a bit of a problem hearing y'all again. And I don't know. Okay. Well, we can, we can hear you that. well. And folks are hearing you. And I think what they're hearing is a really good lesson about how football paralyzes parallels our faith because that you mentioned grace uh, that the coaches showed you and that's exactly what we live out in our spiritual life when we make mistakes we're given grace we're given a second chance and you've equated that really well and I, 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 I applaud you for that and we're we're not done yet because we got we got a pastor over here in the we, we got a pastor in the house with Murph and he's going to preach it up in a minute but I got another before we kind of move on I got a uh, two trivia questions, not necessarily questions, but things I want to see if y'all can remember. I, of course, am the botched onside kick fumble recovery. Botched. I didn't get it. Does anybody remember where that was? I'm, no. I'm, I'm hoping you didn't remember. I'm hoping you didn't. It was one of the few times that I actually, after all three of us were injured during that season. Right. Um, I remember Dino limping around too and missing some time. Yes. Um, and I was fairly early on, and then I kind of got back, and then the knee went again. Uh, I got folded up under Struggy Smith one day in practice, and that still hurts, and I'm mm -hmm. 58. But um, it was at East Tennessee in the Dome, and we, uh. were, we were ahead late, and, and Coach had said, Coach Brown said, put him on that. They called it the All-State team, but you're in good hands. Uh, and I was Troy, right Troy Douglas him. came up with that name. Yeah. yeah. Was it Troy? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm on the front row and I had no idea that East Tennessee kicker was going to kick it a hundred miles an hour. I thought they was going to squib it. He kicked a bullet that hit me right in the chest and bounced the other way. And of course I had no shot after that. So, but I'm, I'm also got one other, I'm hoping that the people that play Navy, that's the only time I got on the field. I, I got to play some JV and scored a couple of times and all that was fun. But the, um, the other thing was some people will remember you're the guy that, and, I, and it happened in front of the whole team. Does anybody remember what that was? When I tell you, you might remember. You'll have to tell me. Okay. I won the talent contest <laughs> because I was juggling and I could eat an apple at the same time that I was juggling. And I talked John Settle that, and he ended up doing it on TV, on CBS uh, Live, whatever, before a football game. So, Funny. Um, 
of the hundred people on that team, apparently most of them don't remember that, but that's got me in a couple of conversations. But as far as getting on the field, I'm the one botched recovery. So what I want to do now is, um, is we're going to come back at the end. I want to keep people uh, in. I'm going to make y'all make a prediction about this weekend in the game, but we're going to move on now to what you've done since. And uh, Terrell, I'm going to let you go first. And I want you to, uh, uh, Dino's been off and he's coming back in. Uh, he lost the connection, so he's back in. Um, Dino, if you can hear us, Terrell's going to tell us a little bit about what he's doing. We know that he's, um, well, let me just kind of set it up and you tell me. I know you are, um, you organized, headed, founded, whatever is Life Center International. It's a, uh, a faith-based, men oh, it's a church. And um uh, well, it's a family affair for you. So tell us a little bit about that and how your life ended up that direction. Well, you know, I, I, I interviewed with Hormel Foods uh, out of college. Uh, David Ball was the director of placement at Appalachian. And I was in the gym playing basketball and he came looking for me and said, you need to talk to these people from Hormel. Interviewed in my sweats. Uh, I finished school in December of 84. And so I uh, interviewed in November. They called me in January, offered me a job in sales. I started there in Charlotte with, uh, with Hormel Foods and went from Charlotte to uh, Raleigh territory. And in that time, Susan and I got, got married. We've been married 34 years now. And uh, then I was promoted from Raleigh down to Atlanta in uh, January of 89. And uh, that's where I really began to get plugged into ministry. And uh, begin to serve in ministry down there in October of 89, we found the church and really plugged into to it, not knowing that it was going to be this incredible mega ministry. At that time, it was about 3,000 members. Uh, but serving in, in that ministry, uh, just connecting with people and doing some work in inner city schools and doing a lot of work with youth and prison ministry. And, uh, and then I was bought on staff in 96. And we started a college ministry. And so I uh, spent a lot of time in Atlanta, in the uh, Atlanta University Center, which is the largest consortium of African-American uh, colleges in the nation with Morris Brown, Spelman, Clark Atlanta, and uh, uh, Morehouse. And so was doing ministry there and built that ministry. And then in, in 2000, I was named director of all of our youth. Uh, and by then, the ministry was about a 20,000 person min ministry. And so the youth ministry was about 6,000 kids. And so I oversaw that. And then in 2003, our pastor, who was from Charlotte, said, I want to start a work in Charlotte, sent me up to Charlotte to start that work. And we planted it in Huntersville, North Carolina, and uh, built that ministry for 10 years, up to about 13,000, 14,000 people. And, uh, and then transition out of it to start planning another work on the south side of, of Charlotte. Uh, just wanted to do ministry with a different focus in a different way and felt the Lord was leading me away from the big mega ministry, mm -hmm. more of discipleship ministry. And so uh, now I'm leading Life Center International Ministry that I founded in uh, 2013. And uh, we're over in the Westinghouse area right before Carowinds in Charlotte. And I've been leading that work for, uh, for nine years now. And the Lord's been real faithful. Ministry's been good to me. I've, I've traveled uh, all over the world pretty much touching lives, ministering with people. I've met a lot of people in a lot of places, been able to sit at a lot of tables I never thought I'd be able to, to sit at. Uh, but I've, I've remained uh, faithful in the calling to serve people and to serve the community that I'm in. And I just continue to do that. And my whole desire, Rusty, is to see uh, people get into the calling that God has for their lives and become who they are uh, in him just living by a motto that I don't have a right to live, to die with anything inside of me. And so I want to pour it out wherever I am and everywhere I go, just that uh, people's lives would be, would be built up and, and see all people surpass me. Uh, my wife's an elder at the ministry. My oldest son oversees our youth ministry. He played a couple of years up at Emory and Henry a small liberal arts college in Virginia yeah. and came home and finished school at UNCC. And then my young, and he played on two state football championship teams out of Charlotte. And then my youngest uh, just finished 
Bible College yeah. in California at uh, at Bethel Ministries, and now he's home and being groomed to uh, to lead the congregation one day, and so he's on staff working with Papa every single day, learning how to to touch lives and build lives and serve people and transform communities and uh so it's a family affair and we're excited about what god's doing and so i just turned 60 uh in april and so i'm ooh, looking ooh. at a new transition in doing ministry and and touching the city mm -hmm. and touching nations around the world uh as we talk about touching the city i i head up a uh, a round table in charlotte for better policing and I was appointed to it by uh, Vilma Leak, who's a commissioner there. But check this out. I was appointed by Johnny Jennings, uh, Appalachian State uh, Hall of Famer, who's the police chief in Charlotte. And so, uh, they talk about all that policing stuff and me and him still away and talk about what's really important. And that's Appalachian football. football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but he's a great guy and I'm encouraged by him. And uh, it's just good to be able to, to have an impact on, on the city. And I think that's what all believers should do. Wow, that that's fantastic. Uh, and you know, the fact that your family is all, I don't want to say bought in, called and, and accepted that call too is a testament to your leadership as a, a husband and a father. And um and, and I, I think I could I think I could have realized that back in 1983. You you had something special, you were captain for a reason. So I appreciate that. I think we've got. Thank Dino you. back now, and I want to yeah. let's. Let, I'm going to bring him in and let right. him tell us a little bit about his. He's back. You're back, Dino. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm saying, I just Terrell. I just want to tell you, I, I followed. I followed your career over wow. and what you've been doing um, <laughs> over the last you know, 40 years since since we've been apart, and so very proud of of what you've accomplished and. It, it, when I when I go back to app and I talk uh, to my former teammates, your your name is brought up very often, and and you're you're all obviously loved by your former teammates, but also we're we're very proud of 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 what you you chose to do with your life, which was to honor God. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. It means a lot. Yeah. And so you can tell right away that Dino Hackett's not one of those guys who goes professional and has a great NFL career and then kind of moves on past the people in high school and college or whatever. And, and, and I appreciate that, Dino. I have, there's very few pictures of you online in an app uniform, but this is maybe the most descriptive of what happens when you were on a field at App State. You're getting ready to lower the boom on somebody in this <laughs> picture. And, and I want to tell a quick story, and I'm going to let you catch us up on, you know, I want to talk about, you know, your Chiefs thing and now your business. But um, at, there were times when I was injured that I would be back and forth. You remember if you went to the south end zone, I think it was, that was scout team, which is where you were because you were first team defense. Right. So an offensive guy didn't want to be down there. We wanted to be up <laughs> toward the field house. And there were times after my injury, I would fluctuate back and forth. But I remember being down there one time running the other team's offense. And I had to run a like three yards and then a crossing route that came right in behind the linebackers. And I looked down the line when we got ready to snap the ball and there was Dino Hackett and Cedric Felton. And I remember thinking, please, Lord, let Dino remember that this is not a full contact drill. I remember thinking that, like, because I'm going to die if for some reason he forgets that. And fortunately, I think you kind of nudged me and didn't kill me. And to this day, I'm probably, my wife's probably thankful. But um, you, your hits that you made on people were legal. Let me, let me, um, let me take you, let me see if we can see if you remember this. Let's go to this. You remember that one? Wow. I did. Uh, wow. I did. There you, you go. <laughs> you can see this picture. I know we don't see your picture, but and, here's uh, here's why I, I pulled that one up off the internet. You yeah, already that, have that look in your eye like you're about to hit somebody. And said he's going to be a professional football player <laughs> at, uh, with, with that stature. Uh, wow. The, <laughs> that's the guy that said in class, that kid right there said in class, probably that day at school, I'm going to yeah, be a pro football player. The, the, that, the, that focus was there and that dream was there from, from day one. And, uh, you know, 
I, I'm so blessed to be able to to have fulfilled not just that, but virtually every dream and every prayer that I ever had in my life. Um, God blessed me with, and you know, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but my grandfather was a Methodist minister. Um, I did not know that, and is he was a brilliant man. He, he uh, uh, went to Harvard and then he got his doctorate at Duke Divinity. Um, so obviously had the ability to do anything that he, he, he could ever want with his life. And he goes like Terrell Murphy to dedicate his life to the ministry. And for me, that was always a, a very strong, strong, a backup for my 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 beliefs that I'm, that had this kind of ability and and, and this kind of education um, chose to believe and to dedicate his life to something that you know we can't see we can't touch but but you know when when I saw that as a young child I knew that any dream that I that I wanted. I could pray those prayers. I could I could use the ability that God gave me, and and and, and do what out whatever I wanted with. It. And you know I was able to achieve that dream uh, as a to to be able to get an education. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my first dream I had no no ability whatsoever to go to college unless I got a scholarship. Mm -hmm. I got a ride mm -hmm. action. Um, I don't you know you guys remember me in those days. I came in as a strong safety. Uh, weighed about 190 pounds. Um, a actually, Mac Brown moved me to inside backer um, right before he left. That he made that spring ball after his he, he decided, you know, you're going from strong safety to middle linebacker. And so my junior and senior year, you know, played middle linebacker. But you know, to to play professionally, but then you know the blessings that I've had as a, as a father. Um, with my two children, um, my daughter Dustin, who went to Appalachian, mm -hmm. my son Max, who went to Appalachian. As I, we said before, I met my wife Cindy at App. Um, got uh, I've got two nieces who went to App. We're just yeah, it's it's been a family affair at Appalachian State, and, and it is home. And actually, we uh, I have have got a home site up there, build a home in Boone, and be moving back up there. Well, part time. In the future, but uh, in those dreams, I was blessed to come true. And then after I got out of football, you know, you don't really have, you know, kind of a, a period there where you're not, you know, what what am I going to do with the rest of my life? You know, what 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 am yeah. I going to? And uh, I I went into to building, um, and this is something that I didn't think I'd have a passion for, but you find that you know. Uh, you can you you find passion in in in, in seeing something come to fruition, um, and I've, I've been very very blessed in that aspect of my life. Um, so it's just uh, I can't count the blessings that have, have been bestowed upon me in, in this lifetime, and a lot of it, I really, uh, as I said before, goes back to um, you know seeing that someone who I really, really respected in my life um, that ha had this tremendous ability um, and obviously, you know, tremendous education, could have done other things, but completely devoted his life to the ministry. And for me, that made everything easy for me from there on. It's made it easy. Um, you know, to, if, if he can devote his life to that, and I know all the dreams and all the blessings that I've had. It, it's, it's, uh, you know, but as long as I stay and I continue to leave, um, it, it's 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 not it's not drink. It is prayers that come through. Yeah. Wow. You, you know, and you, you have about three boom moments tonight. Boom! Like every time, boom. Murph has two. This has been even better than I expected. You guys are awesome, Murph. You were going to say something. I, I was going to say to, to Dino's statements, that's so powerful, uh, realizing the connection that his grandfather uh, carried and that he tapped into 
and maybe someone in your bloodline even before that. I'm, I'm not sure because I don't know the genealogy, but the beauty of it is the Lord's blessing and his assignments for our lives don't always look like those that were before us, where his grandfather was in a pulpit. Now Dino has a mobile pulpit where he's going out serving people in the marketplace. And what he carried at Appalachian was just sent a, such a sense of presence. I mean, dude, yeah. when, you show, when you showed up, I knew you meant business. And uh, I was kind of glad some of our offense had changed because where I had been, the strong safety had to do a lot of covering of me. And I didn't want to get hit by that guy because I knew that he carried this focus, not arrogant, but just sure in who he was. And that's so much that was passed down from your grandfather and probably your grandmother's prayers over your life that are still manifesting today and they'll be carried out into your, into your children and your children's children's life. And it doesn't always look like standing behind a pulpit, but it does look like a blessed life and being positioned to be able to bless other people. And that's, that's what you've been, man. You've been a blessing to so many people as a teammate, uh, people who watched you and came to Appalachian Games, your life carried an anointing, whether we knew that's what it was or not, that blessed so many people. I worked for Hormel Foods for about 12 years in their grocery products division. And uh, one year we were uh, doing a big Super Bowl promotion and uh, Ronnie Lott and Marcus Allen were representatives from the NFL that was working with us. And I remember going to Marcus Allen and, and I said, man, I played college football with Dino Hackett and a smile came <laughs> on his face. And he said, that guy is the real deal. And he said, he's probably hit one of the hardest licks I ever took in the NFL was from Dino Hackett. And he just spoke very highly of you, but everyone I know does. And I believe that's just a grace on your, your life that will continue and uh, I just thank God for you. We don't talk a lot, but I see you on Facebook and I'm encouraged by your life and what you're doing. And man, just keep it up. Thank you, brother. And uh, you know, guys, I'm sure what you said about the genealogy and those that came before us, I, I truly believe that we have someone who's who's got God's ear up there, who's who's who's, who's helps us along the way. And I don't know if you, if you guys agree with this or not, but this is really once I had kids, once I had kids, I really got much more grounded in, in my belief. Um, and it, it just it came to, you know, having a child in your life just completely changes everything. Yeah. And you know how much you love them and, and how what you would do for them. And, you know, you would. With, without ever thinking of lay down your life for them and think that, that God gave his child for us. Um, you know, again, uh, just another, you know, very strong um, foundation or for, for belief to, to, to have that feeling, to know that what, what he sacrificed for us and, and wondering, you know, how, how, how you could ever do that as a parent. Yeah. Yeah, one of the really things that's really, really incredible about hearing that, Dino and, and Murph hearing you, and like they're going to be people who, I, and I can tell from some of the comments I got on Facebook, who were there back in 83 that don't know a whole lot about what's going on. And to be honest, like in my case, they may not recognize me. They say him, like him, because like he was, but I think, you know, during the high school and college years, most most of us were knuckleheads at some point in time, but by God's grace, like Dino was just talking about and Murph referred to earlier, like we're not we're not the same people. We are the same in many ways. We have these relationships, but we've been transformed. And we've been transformed not just by age and maturity, but we've been transformed by a God who didn't give up on along us on the way and kept saying, you know what? you've fallen, but I'm picking you right back up because I still have a plan for you. And I, I hear that in both your voices. And I hope that people that are at fans from the 80s, we, we all, you know, most everybody knows Dino Hackett had the career in the, with the Kansas City Chiefs. And there he is with that glare in his eye on the screen right now. But 
man, he's got a, a look in his eye now that's toward the Savior. And yeah. Murph has always been a great leader. Now he's a great leader of a congregation, of a, of a church. And so God was planting those seeds all along. What do you think of that, Murph? I mean, give me your you know, input on that. I, 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 I can so bear witness of what you're saying because uh, I, was a, I was a wild one in college. And I'll be a little transparent because it's, it's part of my strength now. But, uh, you know, I had a great aunt in Granite Falls, North Carolina, right off the mountain there between Lenore and Hickory. And she said, Terrell's going to be the first pastor in the family. And at that time, I was drinking and smoking and doing all the unmentionables that you could that you could imagine. Um, and so it was kind of like I said, well, don't you all hold your breath on that one. But there's something about life and Dino tapped it with children. Uh, but I know that even before our children came, I just moved into a place where uh, I gave my life to, to Christ. And, and I believe this, guys, I believe that, and I'm not being biased, but I think it's true. I believe athletes make the best anything. I believe there's an endurance and a perseverance and an overcoming ability that we have through our development in sports yep. that makes us able to succeed if we really apply and keep ourselves align properly, succeed in anything that we touch in a, in a great way. But all that I went through becomes a testimony. I was yes. a in college, but my first assignment in ministry was on a college campus. And uh, I was able to, to deal with kids who were drinking and smoking and, and living lives that they were just trying to fit in because I remember trying to fit in too. But all of those marks that I bore, even this brand on my arm, uh, became a witness to so many students uh, all over the Atlanta University Center in, in Atlanta and 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 either things outside of Atlanta, but it was the journey and what you become in the hard pressing. And no matter what age you are, there's always going to be something you have to deal with that's going to pull you into another level of maturity through enduring and overcoming and making the right choices for the kingdom of God. And so it doesn't matter where anybody is, you just start where you are, but there's nothing like having roots sown inside of you through challenges and experiences in life that awaken you to the fact that there is a God, that he is with me, he loves me unconditionally, and there are some principles of his kingdom that if I, if I follow them out, my life can be lived to serve the generations but also to put inside of my family and my children the things that they need. And so I'm just grateful for God's hand in my life and grateful for all that he put me through because uh, I remember getting called into the office by, um, by Mr. Garner, me and some of my crew. And he said, you guys are out of control. And if y'all don't slow it down, you're all going home. And uh, we changed our lives. We changed the sum of what we were doing at that time. But it was a part of my journey to maturity. And again, God's love, Ooh, grace, yeah. and mercy. Because if I'd have got sent home, that would have been horrible. Uh, but thank God for his love, man. Amen. I feel like I've heard three or four sermons uh, during this time. And our time has gone quickly. I got one last football question for Dino. And then we're <laughs> going to make our predictions for the weekend. Um, I'm wondering if he remembers this picture. That right there is Dino Hackett. But you remember what you just said about you didn't want to get hit by Dino Hackett? <laughs> Walter Payton, sweetness, looks like he's about to be in pain or already is right here. So uh, that, my question for Dino is, first of all, do you remember that? And second of all, do you think like once the tackle's over, like, wow, that was Walter Payton or you don't even think about that? It's, it's you know, yeah, uh, I remember that very, very clearly. And, you know, it's, it's kind of those surreal moments and you look back and see pictures of, of you hitting Bo Jackson or Barry Sanders. And in this instant, you know, probably, you know, I think Barry Sanders is very, very top of the list, but Walter was right, right behind him. And yeah, uh, Walter yeah. career, this is in soldier field. Um, I'm covering Walter man to man out of the backfield. Jim McMahon throws the ball to him. It's a little over his head. It goes through his hands. I don't know he caught the ball. So from where he's at right there, I slung him on his head over my leg. 
in Soldier Field. <laughs> well, <laughs> the side, Cotton fans loved you after that. And I bet. I, sideline, you would have thought I cursed the Pope. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I was getting pelted with everything that you could possibly build, and they <laughs> they were they were mad. They were mad. You just don't do that in Soldier Field to Walter Payton, and. And I kind of, I kind of knew it. I said, "Oh yeah." And what was great? Walter got up and didn't say a thing. Got out, you know. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I remember that. Well, I didn't realize when I got that picture there was that much of a story to it. I didn't even realize he doesn't have the ball. I couldn't oh, tell. He just gone through his hand, and then I slammed him on his head. Oh my goodness! Well, you were popular in Kansas City, but not so much in Chicago. No. So. Like you got to experience a lot of things, and what you know, I can hear it tonight. I, I appreciate, and I know Murph does too, your humility and giving others the credit, giving the Lord the credit, and moving on with your life. And not, I mean, I know you appreciate and enjoy going back, and but you're moving on and trying to continue to new horizons and do other things. And uh, and I'm proud of both of them. So, what I want to do is I'm going to give y'all a chance to get the last word here in a moment. But us three are each going to make our prediction about what's going to happen in Boone this weekend. I was there. I think Dino and I were both there last uh, fall when Coastal Carolina came, which was the biggest game in Boone to that point. And, um, and App State won that one. And then, of course, App State beat North Carolina last year in Chapel Hill. Now, we've lost some key starters on both sides of the ball. But I'm going to give uh, – Murph, the first shot at making a prediction about this weekend. Out by three. Out by three. Okay. Are you going to go with a score or just leave it at three? No, no score. Just out by three. <laughs> okay. All right, well, Dino. Well, I'm hearing that prediction. I hope our field goal kicker knocks it down. <laughs> you know, it, following this team through the years, and you see last year, um, you know, we've lost so many defensive players. Um I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of holes that have to be filled defensively. And if we can go out, I, I watched a little bit of their game last week. Uh, the running backs were very impressive to me. They, they got speed. Um, you know, I think at any defense has to, to stop the run. And I think if defensively, if we can fill those, I think we've lost our top five tacklers. Um, so if we can replace those guys and our defense shows up and we can stop the run, uh, we're going to be really effective. I, for you guys know this, the receiving core that was there last yeah. year that was just tremendous. You know, and a lot of those guys are, are playing in the league now or have opportunities to play in the league. Um, so we're going to have to fill those shoes. Um, I think that uh, I think we'll, we will rise to the challenge offensively. I think I think we'll be able to score points. Um, I think the question is going to be our defense. Um, and again, if I think we, we can stop the run and make them be a one dimensional offense and try, try to throw the football because our DBs are, are strong, uh, we're, we're going to be okay. But I think the deciding factor is 35,000 screaming Appalachian. Yeah, fans. yeah, um, I think the atmosphere is going to be incredible, and I think that in itself is going to give our team the energy to win the football game. Um, I, I don't, I don't know about scores. I, I think it's an app win at home against you know two very worthy opponents that are going to come out and play hard. Wow, wow! So yeah. we got two app. There is no way I'm going to call <laughs> one of the. There's no way I could do that, even if I believed that. But I was there. And, and Dino, are you going to the game this weekend? Yes, yes, I'll be okay, there. So you'll be yeah. there, and you were at the Coastal game, I think. I was. Right? Yeah. Okay. I was. I've never experienced anything like that. I, I, I was there and I got to uh, be down by the locker room. I got a special pass. I was down at the field. I've moved around a lot. I, I can't imagine an opponent coming in there. I don't care if you played in the ACC or not. This is not like, this is not a team. This people are wild and I loved every second of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say at by one because I want it to be, I want it to be by 20, but I think it's going to be by one, which will make it even, even more dramatic. Uh, if it happens last second again, fine. If not, I'll just take the app win. So I'm going – we got three app guys that are going to 
Um, we're not biased. We're, we're, we're just going to say it's going to be at state. I, I, I can't wait. So um, I'll give each of you kind of a last word and then I'll sign us off guys. It's, uh, we've had a great time together. Um, Murph, um, say goodbye to the folks and leave us a message. Well, to everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in who has, and I, I hope that there's been some things that have been said that somehow edify your, your life and just strengthen you in some way. Uh, I hope that you see at the end of the day uh, that the kingdom of God is about relationships. And while Dino and I and Rusty and I are not with each other all the time, there's a bond and a relationship that we have that uh, will last forever. So thank you, Rusty, for allowing me to be a part of your life and what you're doing. Dino, thanks for just always your honor towards me, man, and you just being who you are. I think you're awesome, and I talk about you as often as I can. So thanks to everyone. You too, brother. Yes, and Dino? Guys, it's, it's, it's great to spend time with you all and see you again. Um, you know, it's, it, it is kind of ironic that on the other sidelines are two guys who were very instrumental in our lives. Um, uh, you know, and, and for me, particularly those guys believed in me and, and, and didn't throw me away and gave me a second chance. And, you know, I, I the, you know, I, I can say that changed my life, but the fact that God always gives me a second chance, regardless of my, my faults. My downfalls. I always, he always, he does. He doesn't give up on me, and and he never will. And I'll never, <laughs> never, not know where where my my blessings come from. Wow, that's that's incredible. Thanks, guys. You know, I've been trying to put this together for a while, and I've been in touch with you. And we finally did it the week of the Carolina game. So I think God's timing's perfect on this. And I thank you for being for being here, and I appreciate. I, I love. I'm very proud of being called you guys teammates. I know I was a baseball player most of the time, four years, and got that one year of football. I wouldn't trade that for anything. So um, for those who have tuned in, I hope you've enjoyed. And if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, I'll be back again another time soon for another edition of Our Stories, His Glory. <laughs>